All these Pokemon, um, but you know we're gonna hop right into it, and I'm pretty happy with how it ended up. First up, we've got Magearna. Magearna is one of the new Generation Seven Pokemon. It is a legendary, and its ability is Soul Heart, which is I think is very cool. It's basically just a uh, special attack boosting Moxie. Um, so this thing actually has really good natural bulk and a fantastic typing in Steel Fairy. Um, plus it has access to move Shift Gear, which allows it to boost up its attack and speed. Uh, boosting your speed up by two stages definitely puts this thing, even though it has 65 speed, into a range where it can outspeed even a lot of Choice Scarf Pokemon. Um, as well as then you get the attack boost on a 95 attack set, which honestly isn't that bad. So if you wanted to run like a physical kind of set with like uh, Iron Head, Return, Brick Break, or... I don't know, Explosion, I guess. Uh, there's not a lot of good options there, clearly. But if you wanted to run that set, it's an option. Uh, it's definitely not limited that much on the physical side as far as the ability to run it, rather just the coverage. But then it's got a lot of really great special coverage. Uh, things like Aura Sphere, um, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, obviously Flash Cannon, and Floor Cannon. It is a uh, move that's like um, the signature move. So it's basically just a Fairy-type Draco Meteor, but Fairy is obviously such a good, valuable offensive typing because... Not a lot of things resist it. Um, Focus Blast is great. Grass Knot. Um, even though it already had Energy Ball, Grass Knot's an option. Uh, Ice Beam. Uh, it has access to screens, Shadow Ball, T-Bolt, and Volt Switch, which is honestly very cool as it allows it to be that pivot. A uh, slow, bulkier pivot, which is always very, very nice. Um, so, I am excited to have this on my team. I think it can do well. However, with my experience on it, on the ladder, I haven't been able to use it very effectively so hopefully we are able to get the ball rolling with Magearna very quickly and it's not going to be like a Pokemon where we have to kind of figure out how to use it before it gets good um next up we have Tornado Starion which is, has previously been an A1 caliber pick and now we have it an A2 so I am very very excited about that uh this thing is honestly so good uh just great mixed attacking stats especially uh after a life orb boost or something um Obviously, a dominating speed stat at 121 uh, speeds things like Zam, um, and other 120s, which is very cool. Uh, I guess gets the jump on a lot of fast Pokemon. Um, but acrobatics is uh, it just has phenomenal clumps, like like acrobatics for physical uh, flying coverage, um, as well as maybe fly. Honestly, yeah. Um, it has a lot of physical coverage, a lot of special coverage. Uh, Air slash hurricane. Uh, just crunch, brick break, extra sensory, grass knot, hammer arm, heat wave, uh, knockoff, psychic, sludge bomb, sludge wave, superpower, uh, U turn, and then obviously your chilling moves like taunt and tailwind make uh, make this thing just honestly such a threat. Um, its ability to pivot with regenerator and U turn is what makes it, I think, a metagame defining Pokemon in general. Uh, just because it can pivot out with U turn uh, and regenerate up its health makes, and then that icing makes everything else look a lot better because it has the coverage and offensive potential to come in, do some damage to whatever's on the field, and then when it wants to switch out, it usually has a speed stat to just quickly pivot on out and heal back up at the same time. And that's really, really huge for it. But I'm very excited to have this thing, especially in my A2 slot, because it's definitely a Pokemon that could have easily gone in A1 and nobody would have been surprised. Um, so I'm very excited to have it here. It's had a very successful history in this league. Next up, we've got Ments. Um, Salamence is our first defogger, but Salamence is also another Pokemon that could hit on the physical and special side, as well as has a pretty good speed stat and two very good abilities. Uh, one, obviously, is Intimidate, which makes it run a very viable defensive set, um, uh, or just helps it get a Dragon Dance up once they go down that road. And then Moxie, uh, which is always the devastating uh, tool to sweep with, but this thing's got some, some firepower. Um, it's got a lot of great physical and special coverage, uh, so it can really just do whatever it wants um I'm, I'm really excited about it unfortunately it does it is a second flying type um right that i had right at the bat so i had to kind of synergize with that later on but i'm not too worried about that because we had a lot of rock weaknesses in the past plus tornadoes doesn't even fear rocks it can just regenerate it on out of there um yeah this thing just runs really great physical sets uh special sets sweeping sets scarf sets banded sets spec sets uh, defensive variants, specially defensive variants, uh, can wish pass, I'm pretty sure, um, which is nuts, uh, tailwind support, um, roar, so hate, phasing, roost, yeah, it just has a phenomenal move pool, so I'm very excited to have this in B tier, I originally wanted Hydreigon, I would have been very happy with Hydreigon at the time, uh, but Salamence ended up looking pretty damn good, um, 
Metagross is our next Pokemon up, and so we drafted both of the Gen 3 pseudo legendaries. And as you can see, our team's BST is actually just off the chain. Um, it's actually we have an average team BST of 570 somehow, which is just nuts. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but. Metagross is our next Pokemon, and Metagross is one of the Pokemon, again, that can do anything. People sleep on that 95 special attack stat, which really isn't bad at all. Definitely has some usable special coverage. Uh, things like Flash Cannon, uh, Psychic, um, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Sludge Bomb. Things has got very, very respectable special coverage. Um, and then obviously it has phenomenal physical coverage as well with things uh, with access to priority um, and good diversity there too. Things like Explosion, let it uh, be a good suicide lead. Um, Axe the trick means we aren't just fodder for a lot of more defensive Pokemon. Um, this thing was also our first rocker, which is what I really was looking for. I wanted a rocker, but I hate rockers that just lose me all pressure. So it's nice to have an offensive rocker right off the bat. Um, especially one that's as good as Metagross with access to everything that Metagross has access to. Um, it's unfortunate this thing doesn't have Sword Stance, but it has, does have Power Up Punch, which is an option if I ever wanted to go down that route, as well as Agility. So Agility Power Up Punch could be a very cool set with like Dual Stab or something. I don't know. Uh, or like some like Ice Punch or some other move, I guess, Thunder Punch. I don't, I don't know if it know. Uh, but I'm very excited to have Metagross on the team for this coming season. Um, Next up, we've got Wishy Washy, and Wishy Washy is honestly really exciting to have on my draft uh, because it has awful, awful coverage. But the thing is, people, it has just phenomenal stats in its school form. Um, it has just insane stats in its school form, and the thing is, that speed stat holds it back for sure. But the, what you got to realize about its school form is it happens at the end of the turn. So even if I fall below twenty five percent. I'm still going to keep my one one last attack with my w school form. Um, and also, the other thing I want to explain about this is the Wishy Washy is really good also because its ability doesn't actually hinder it as much as people think it does. Um, Wishy Washy's ability only comes into play once Wishy Washy is usually below 25%. And at that point, it was probably going to die to the next attack anyway. wasn't going to get another attack off because it's slow as garbage. Um, so I'm honestly not too worried about it. Uh, it's probably going to end up being... A really good fit for my team. It's powerful as all hell. Obviously not great coverage, but things like pivoting are nice. Um, can hit just pretty much everything it needs to hit. So, and honestly, on the physical or special side, so that's pretty huge. Like 140, 140 is insane. Um, next up, we've got Hoopa, and this is our I think this is our already our I think one, two, three. For fifth Pokemon over 600, 600 over, and then also 20 isn't even a slouch either on BST. But um, Hoopa is phenomenal uh, for a C tier pick, and I was really happy that it made it this far. Um, it's got a, just a ridiculous move pool. Um, just honestly, just a ridiculous move pool. Like, this thing cannot be stopped. Um, I once had the unfortunate time of facing it because it can run physical and special sets really effectively, as well as has a really good amount of special defense. Um, and also has access to a lot of cool things like Nasty Plot, Magic Coat, um, Taunt, uh, Thunder Wave, and then also there's Destiny Bond, which I think is really cool, actually, that people haven't used a lot. But this thing's coverage is just ridiculous. I mean, we can just go down as uh, physical coverage. Brick Break, Drain Punch, Facade, Fire Punch, Foul Play. Uh, you would never use Foul Play, I imagine, but Gunk Shot, um, Hyperspace Fury, you know, that's nuts. Um, Ice Punch, Knock Off, uh, Power Up Punch. Uh, return, obviously, Thunder Punch, and Zen Headbutt just is already phenomenal. And then you go down the special side. Dark Pulse, Energy Ball, Focus Blast, Grass Knot. Uh, oh, that was weird. Um, grass Knot, Psychic, Psy Shock, um, Signal Beam, Thunderbolt. It's it's crazy. And then also has stuff like Charge Beam down here, too. Dual Chop, you know, if you wanted to run that dra those dragon moves. You never know. That's pretty crazy. I did not know it had Dual Chop. That's actually awesome. Um, that's a really cool move. Uh, I don't know, people don't use it a lot, and I think it's actually a very, very good move. Um, also, it's things like Guard Split, if I wanted to take some of my opponent's defenses. Uh, that's that could be kind of re really cool. Um, so, I'm definitely really excited for Hoopa in C tier. Uh, obviously, it's, it's speed stat does hold it back a little bit, but I think it's very good at what it does, which is just being a really potent wall breaker in this tier. Um, mixed wall breaker. That, that's not a lot. Of, you can't find a lot of Pokemon that can do it as well as uh, they can down there. So, next up we've got Verizian, and Verizian was honestly not the Pokemon I was originally going for in this spot. I was originally looking at so maybe some kind of hazard clear in the C2, but Verizian was available and just fit my draft, I thought, really well. Um, 
I'm also looking for maybe some pivot, but it does does a lot of stuff. Uh, has access to the Swords Dance and Column Mind Sets if I want to go down either of those routes. Uh, fantastic speed means, in this, especially down here, and really, really solid special book means we're going to be able to set up on actually a wide variety of stuff. Has access to priority with Quick Attack. Um, yeah, Taunt's cool. Has access to reliable recovery with Synthesis, which is really awesome. Um, pretty, pretty uniquely good dual uh, offensive typing actually i think like people don't realize grass fighting is actually like really quite good um it gets i think neutral coverage on everything except flying which you have stone edge for anyways um so i'm i'm actually maybe not buggy yeah not bug either but like with stone edge this thing achieves pretty much perfect uh coverage on the entire metagame so i'm really excited about that because after swords dance 90 attack is no slouch uh especially i go like life orb or something um and it has the bulk to set that up which is really really awesome and the speed to not need to set up its speed i don't know i feel like verizian is just one of those pokemon that definitely has a lot going for it um in the lower tiers it definitely has a lot of potential also just like as a tank of some sort um as a screen setter if i wanted or that doesn't lose me offensive pressure that's pretty huge um, and special physicals, you know me, I always love my special physical split. Next up, Drodigan came back. And Drodigan is a mod that I was absolutely in love with last season, honestly. Um, I just feel like every time I brought it, it did what it needed to do. Um, it's got a ridiculous move pool. Uh, access to Sucker Punch is huge. Um, phenomenal physical move pool. It is, um, like, the only stats that hold this thing back are really its speed stat, because it doesn't even need special attacks. And if it does want to run Sheer Force plus special attack, it's not the worst option in the world with 60. Um, Sheer Force will give you a pretty nice boost with Life Orb to those. But um, this thing's got a ridiculous move pool, and as well as access to Glare um, and Stealth Rocks, uh, Taunt. There's some really cool utility options that make it really, really effective against a wide variety of teams. Um, 120 attack with coming off a Sheer Force boost is ridiculous. Uh, sheer Force and then Life Orb. Like, I'm, I sh was amazed all the time at how easily Drudigan could score KOs, um, especially with this really diverse coverage move pool. Um, so I am really excited to see where this thing goes this season. Um, it was a much-needed rocker. Uh, I think it's actually... Um, I don't know. It, I think it was my second rocker... Maybe my first. I'm not sure. Um, but we needed a rocker. But this thing is going to fill that role in admirably, I think. Because, just just look at this. It's it's so good offensively. But then it also has three fantastic abilities. And one of them makes it very viable defensively. And I think that's really cool out of a mom like this. Next up, we've got Kabutops, which is another rocker. As well as a hazard clear. As well as access to priority. So it does a whole lot of stuff for us as far as role filling. While also maintaining a good amount of offensive pressure and not the worst physical bulk at least um the speed stat obviously could at least be desired but maybe i can run like a cool like rain team one time um and just run swift swim life orb uh access to rapid spin is huge not the f best move pool but definitely has access to some cool stuff uh x scissor uh swords dance waterfall superpower stone edge um i don't know there's definitely night slash is cool uh there's some stuff to work with here it's not phenomenal especially because it actually has unfortunately diverse Special move pool, things like Ice Beam, Scald, uh, Surf, um, Blizzard, Geek Drain. It has an unfortunately great special, or decent special move pool, which I don't know how well it's going to be able to make use of with only 65 special attack and no real way to boost it up any higher. Um, but that said, like I'm, I'm pretty excited. This I think this was a very good D2 pick and does a lot of different stuff for me. Um, it isn't the most diverse as far as what it can do, but it just is like a Pokemon that, in, especially in the D tier, is like fairly reliable and can still put a lot of offensive pressure on even higher tier Pokemon, and that says a lot about it. Um, next up we've got Avalog, also making its return as a rapid spinner. Avalog is freaking dope. This thing was awesome last season. It's got a ridiculous attack stat, but mostly a ridiculous defense stat, but a 117 attack makes it no slouch if it's clicking Avalanche, things like Avalanche or Earthquake. Um, I just, I think Mirror Coat is kind of awesome on this thing. Uh, with special investment, it honestly doesn't, can take a special hit or two, um, which is kind of nice. You do see that and think, oh, dies with special attack. But you can actually fully invest in special attack, and it goes up very quickly to what's honestly not the worst special attack in the, uh, special defense in the world. Um, so I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, as I always was, it's got just, it's a great rapid spinner. It's a good wall. It's good at what it does. That doesn't. It's a wall that doesn't lose you that much offensive pressure. Um, as well as it's got, it's got it's got a lot of options, things like Gyro Ball, Crunch, Earthquake, Avalanche, for its one or two physical attacks that it runs when it runs a wall-type roll. Um, it has Sturdy, which I didn't realize last season until like it was, I lost my like second or third game, um, which 
is actually pretty cool because if you do end up dying uh, in looks like that fire blast or something, you know that unexpected fire blast. A lot of times, like you can hit it with a really hard avalanche at 120 base power, um, which is a lot. That's a lot of power um, coming off an 117 attack stat. Uh, so yeah, I am very excited about Avalok for sure. Um, it's nice to have it in in uh, E1. It's honestly a pretty good mod to have there. But next up we got Vileplume, who's making its return after we got it traded in, I think, in Season 4. And Vileplume is so effing good. Jesus Christ, people don't realize. It's got good mixed attacking stats for this low at 80, 110. At this low of a tier, at E2, it's got amazing mixed attacking stats, as well as phenomenal coverage. Uh, it's got fairy coverage, um, so it's like, obviously grass, fighting coverage, uh, fairy coverage, poison coverage, um, and that's really all it needs to hit the entire metagame, at least neutrally, um, as well as Hidden Power, obviously. And then things like um, Pile Dance are obviously cool. Sleep Powder is very cool. Stun Spore, uh, access to recovery, and hugely access to aromatherapy is really nice because I have no other way to clear hazards, as well as I don't have anything like um, a fire type to switch into uh, Will-O-Wisps, so that's definitely really nice. So I'm really excited about this thing, um, as well as uh, a couple pretty cool abilities if I want to throw like an offensive set or some team. I have a lot of options for uh, weather teams if I wanted to go down that route. Um, but effect spore is also... Uh, I've had it come in clutch I think once um, and that was pretty nice. But finally we have slacking and slacking is definitely a controversial choice because obviously it kind of sucks. But um, it also doesn't suck because it's an if you think about it like this, it's an F tier mon that can usually consistently get a kill on any Pokemon it wants. So, it's not going to be able to do that much after that, but if you can trade your F tier and then switch it out with a C or B or even an A tier pick, you just traded your F for an A, maybe your F for two A's or something, and all of a sudden, slacking starts to look really good, because you can switch it out on the turn you have true arm. It does give your opponent a turn to set up something, um, but if I can plan out ways to stop things from setting up on me, I should be really just good to go. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to see what this thing can do. Um, it just hits so hard. 160 with a band, and I, I shudder to think what this thing can do. Um, but and it's got great coverage too. Play rough, uh, pursuit, night slash, shadow claw. Um, obviously earthquake, uh, fighting coverage, uh, normal coverage. It's got that standard ice uh, normal type coverage, which is awesome. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys like the draft as much as I do. This might be one of the better drafts I've ever had. Um, and we're going to see how Season 7 goes. We are playing the Memphis Manless Wines in Week 1, and I am, I'm feeling pretty confident about the team I've got assembled so far. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. It is always very appreciated. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Cracking.